This interview is for information only and should not be considered as investment advice or a recommendation to buy shares in the company featured. Welcome to this stock box interview. Well, joining us today is Alan Sims, the CEO of Sizzle Biotechnology. Hello, Alan. Welcome back on. How are you? Great to see you again, Mark. So happy to give you a quick update on what's going on in the company. Indeed. Yes, indeed. Well, thank you for joining us. I know you have uh, recently returned from the United States, so we'll talk about that in a moment. The first thing I wanted to just sort of talk about really is the recent volatility in the uh, in the share price of Sizzle. I mean, do you think this is reflective of broader macro events that are perhaps going on with uh, what's going on with uh, banking bailouts? It, it's a great question. And obviously, people are asking, you know, what's behind sort of the uprise generally in the share price? I mean, you know, compared to many other stocks in this sector, you know, we've seen excellent performance in Sizzle Biotech share price, um, which, <clears throat> to be honest, doesn't surprise me at all. But I think that there is an impact that the sort of the banking sector sort of ripple effect has. And, and so it's a good opportunity first to say is that, look, there's nothing in terms of any news that perhaps all of our shareholders feel they haven't heard or or something else that's relevant to the company that's caused that share price to go up and that somebody has got some inside track to where we are because we're always being very transparent with our business we always try to let all of our shareholders know through the normal channels and when there's good news we'll put it through rns but it is interesting that this particular time of the year, coming up to the end of the tax year, um, people wondering about what to do with their funds in EIS and uh, perhaps their, their, their sort of various ISAs and whether or not they should move money around. And it always causes a little bit of a, an issue within stock markets. And then you pile on top the, the uncertainty, particularly within tech stocks, of the Silicon Valley Bank failure. Um, and, you know, what great news that the government acted so quickly to resolve that and allay the fears that technology companies that were exposed to that um, knew that they had secure funding, you know, on the Monday morning. That that was lightning fast response and was very necessary. So that's a great result here in the UK. And obviously things have settled down a bit. Although, you know, if you live in Switzerland, you'll be very aware of, of what's going on with the Swiss banking sector and globally, of course, you know, the the Credit Suisse situation. So my personal feeling on that is that number one is Sizzle Biotech was never exposed to any of that. We don't have any funds associated with any of those banks. Um, our funding is in place and we're secure financially um, with our funding taking us through to 2024. So we are, you know, we are well funded, very stable, and we don't have any exposure whatsoever for that. But nonetheless, the sector does have a ripple to it. Um, and I think, you know, we go back to something I've said on, on your program before, which is that you know, when we came to market, we we did suffer a big share for price early, some early sellers and just generally the state of the market last year, which was dire. Um, and we're seeing recovery from that. So as much as there is a correction in the market price and, you know, independent analysts had said that our company was undervalued at the price. Um, last year, we are seeing some correction to that, and um, you know, and if you if you look at what uh, Hardman and Co said about our valuations last year, you'd say we're still a long way off that. So, so in fact, I'm I'm very pleased to see there has been an upward correction, and I think you know, as it always, when you do see such a sharp rise, there'll always be shareholders that will take a profit. Yes, yeah. so it won't be a straight line, but generally, it's been a really good. Um, performance on our share. So hopefully the visibility we're getting um, and the enthusiasm for what we're doing will continue to be reflected in an upward share price. Good. Well, thank you for that. It's perhaps uh, the market recognising perhaps the the value there, the undervaluation, let's say, maybe in in the in the value of the company there, given everything that's going on. The fact that you said there that you are fully funded through to twenty twenty four for all the operations, which is very good, given the kind of uncertainty perhaps at the moment in uh, the markets in general. I just want to pick up as well on some recent uh, topical news around NHS waiting times. I mean, we often see this come around almost every year in the United Kingdom. Um, it seems to get worse 
us every year, unfortunately. But it is very topical at the moment, isn't it? And you will have your ear to the ground on this. So, I mean, what are you hearing in terms of how bad the situation is? And, of course, the stuff that CISO Biotech are doing to, uh, well, hopefully develop a treatment that will, uh, will, will, will help alleviate some of these problems. Very timely, very topical issue as of today, um, which is that the satisfaction reports that come out on the NHS have gone down. Um, and one of the main factors for that is the waiting times that people have, not just in A&E and being seen, and we all know the stories of the ambulances outside queuing to get in, the bed blocking problems that are there, but but the inability for people to get appointments to have their diagnoses. And, and first, may I say, you know, I feel sorry for everybody that works in the NHS. I think we've got one of the best health systems in the world and, and the people that work in it, you know, they, they deliver such a fantastic service. So I have up most respect for them and and i think you know when people look at these statistics about sort of dissatisfaction it's principally about the structure it's not about the individual so i think we all need to be clear how brilliant the people are that work within the nhs and what great job they do um so they are the ones being hampered they're the ones having to face this so you know i have totally total support for them but the fact remains is that anybody that should have a regular cancer test or a screening test that delays going or has symptoms and delays going or just you know because of the frustration of getting appointments doesn't go that causes a big problem because as our strap line of our, our company says look detect early saves lives and so if you don't detect early then we're going to lose lives, unnecessarily lose them. And, and it's the whole reason detra of why the business is here. And, and to use it as a segue, I mean, I was just looking up before this program today about some of the latest statistics from the World Health Organization. You know, it's a really sad fact that globally, of all cancers, 10 million people died in 2020. It's mm -hmm. it's just it's horrible to to think about that. That's twenty eight thousand people by the end of this day. Each day, twenty eight thousand people around the world are dying of cancer, and that is not just a terrible thing because somebody's lost their life or families have lost loved ones. It is a big economic problem, <clears throat> and that that cost is twenty five trillion dollars a year, and that's to do with the lost working hours that somebody may have during their treatments it's to do with all the caring that they have to get it's to do with all the hospital the follow-ups the healthcare, the treatments the whole process of cancer is a huge financial burden to the to the globe and so to all and everybody in the globe cancer is a big thing that's a problem and and the reason why sizzle biotech uh, is here and the reason why i'm so enthusiastic about this business is simply because you know, there are many, many people that die of cancer that shouldn't be dying of cancer. And mm -hmm. principally, that's because there's just not enough early cancer detection tests. So so there, there's a big push to try to make the process more efficient, a big push to try to get people to have their diagnoses checked early. And in the case of lung cancer, if you can detect your cancer at stage one, Mm -hmm. then there is a 90% plus chance that you're going to survive more than five years. If it's not until it's diagnosed at stage three, stage four and above, um, then I'm afraid it's maybe five or 10%. So, so yeah. that, that is the real driver. And that's why that's so topical, that news story. So where are Sizzle Biotech at then with their development of the sis one b biomarker, of course, the, uh, the, the blood test to detect early stage cancer? You've just been back to the, from the United States. So what's the latest, Alan? What can you update us on? Well, the USA is a huge market for us. Um, we previously reported a partnership in the US um, and, and also one in China, two very large markets. And going back to those numbers, you know, 250,000 people will be diagnosed of lung cancer in the USA this year. Um, and the problem with that is that 80% of those are already quite advanced. And so our mission is to take that dial at 90% failure to 90% success, which is that only 10% people will lose their lives. And, and so that that is our big target. And the USA is a prime market for delivering that. And in fact, <clears throat> the real problem um, is the number of people that might be walking around with a stage one lung cancer that don't know it. Mm -hmm. um, because if 250,000 people 
uh, have the problem that their, their disease is stage three and beyond, then the number of people with stage one that may not know it because they've not been screened is probably several million. And our estimates, at least internally in the company, means, therefore, if you want to put a screening program in place to look at those at risk, and that means the people that smoke above a certain age, then actually the number that really need to be tested is about 10 million. Now, that's very interesting because, again, <laughs> catching up with our guidelines, so there are changes to screening programs around the world. Um, and certainly in the USA, they have just really updated their screening program to say that within the targeted group of smokers, the, the normal age for screening would be 55 and above. It would be those that smoked 30 packs of cigarettes it would be those perhaps that have symptoms. And they've now said, well, actually, we're going to lower that to 50, the age of 50, and we're going to lower it to those people who smoke less cigarettes. So therefore, uh, therefore, we're going to increase the number of, that we want to screen. So their number for screening is 13 and a half million. So it's not a lot different than our own internal estimates of there's a need for 10 million tests. Now, now, from our viewpoint, and this is the reason why I was in the USA, is that I want to stay very close to that market. I want to understand the routes to market. I want to understand the reimbursement systems. I want to understand the regulatory environment in which we are driving this forward. And so by having partners that we've previously spoken about, such as CorePath, who are experts in pathology, they're experts in the oncology world, they understand the reimbursement process, they understand the pricing of those tests, is we get a shape and the size of what is the product that's needed, what is the price that the reimbursement system will cover, what is the number of people that might need to do that. So our work, coming back to your prime question about where are we in the process, is that we have been honing that test to meet exactly that market demand. And so the progress in the lab, in our, in our labs up at the University of York, um, has been going very well um, over the last few months in particular. So we've now honed down what the test will look like. We've, we've got our automated platform ready to go. Um, and the next steps on that will be to start to enter into clinical testing within the USA. So all very positive from our side with a very clear route to how we get to that very large market. When would you be looking to go clinical testing in the USA, Alan? Have you got a rough time in mind? It's always a difficult question because then, you know, that translates You're tied to, to it. When, when does our dollar start to, to come in? So it's a, it's a difficult one. What I can tell you about is the, is the time process it takes to, from the point of delivering a standard operating protocol with the platform, with all the reagents, with everything ready to go, then you're looking at at least six months beyond that to get okay. something which we would call a laboratory developed test. That's not the same as a full FDA 510k approval for a kit, but it is a an ability to start to sell the kit commercially. So this is not six years away. This is something that's in the near future as far as time is concerned, but it can't start until we deliver that SOP. And that's what we're working hard to do in, in the labs. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Alan Sims, CEO of Sizzle Biotech, for your time today. Great. Delighted to talk. If you enjoyed this interview, then give us a thumbs up, a like, or a retweet. Subscribe to us on YouTube or follow us on Twitter and hit that notification bell to be the first to know when we release new content. There's loads of great content on our website too, across all our programs at stockboxmedia.com. Thank you for watching.